Jesus has been teaching about persistence in prayer. And as he spoke to his disciples, his purpose was to tell them that they must not give up. He goes on to teach a parable addressed to those who were, in speech marks, confident of their own standing before God and who look down on everybody else. So that helps us to understand the words I'm about to read from Luke 18, 9 through to 14. To some who are confident of their own righteousness and look down on everyone else, Jesus told this parable. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood by himself and prayed, God, I thank you that I'm not like the other people, robbers, evildoers, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week and give a tenth of all I get. But the tax collector stood at a distance. He would not even look up to heaven, but beat his breast and said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. I tell you that this man, rather than the other, went home justified before God. For all those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. This appears to be directed at religious leaders and other self-righteous people. It's a good thing, I reckon, when you read this passage in Luke, that no specific group is mentioned, because as we saw, we say, don't we, if the shoe fits, you wear it. In other words, it can, it can relate to us. It can relate in any setting, in any generation, to any kind of people. And I'm sure we can all identify with the character who is self-righteous. There may be an element of that in all of us, I don't know. But I know that Jesus is saying that there are some people for whom this is the predominant factor. They feel confident that they're good enough, that they're strong enough, that they really are somebody to count we're told that two people went up to pray at the temple. One is a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. One stood by himself and prayed and the other stood at a distance. Notice just how many times in the prayer uh, there is a focus upon himself. It tells us, doesn't it, in this uh, particular passage that he's offering this prayer. He said, I'm not like other people. I thank God. And I fast twice a week. Uh, you know, th there's a real sense in which the focus is on those personal pronouns. Actually, he seems to be not praying, but congratulating himself in relation to just how good he is. One writer suggested he thanked God for his invincible goodness. What a splendid fellow he is. He says he's not like the other people. I mean, that's one way to think about how good you are, isn't it? Compare yourself to other people and say, I'm better than they are, or I'm not as bad as they are. And his religious practice is exemplary. We get a picture here of how good he is at his religion. It tells us in verse 12, I fast twice a week and I give a tenth of all I get. That's what is expected of him, but he does it. On the other hand, the tax collector is swift to recognise that he dares not even look up to heaven. And he uses the age-old cry of confession, God have mercy on me, a sinner. What an important verse that is. It's such a, a package up of what it means for us to be able to come to God and recognise just who we are. Jesus allows his audience and his readers to decide which one is justified before God. The tax collector might well have practiced extortion. He might well have been somebody who knew what it was to be bad in so many practical ways. Tax collectors were hated by many because they collected money on behalf of the Romans. And he'd have very little friends and very few friends that he could turn to. But God acknowledged his humility and his contrite heart. This tells us that we're accepted by God, not by virtue of our merits, but because of the outstanding mercy of God. It's one of those accounts where Jesus does a comparison. There is this, there is this. There's somebody who believes that they are special and good, in good standing before God, and there's somebody who recognises, even before a word is spoken, that they really are not the kind of person that has natural mercy from God. Because mercy, by definition, is a gift of God, irrespective of who we are, speaking into our emptiness, speaking into our sinfulness, and speaking into the very real experience that is ours of not being relevant and ready to be able to claim our own righteousness before God. 
such as this man does. So you have the two of them. They stand and people watch. And this could be a very real incident that happened in the temple courts because people went there. And you can just imagine people looking at these two fellows and saying, which one of these two is the one that really is going to have a good standing before God? Before you know anything about them, you might say it's got to be the religious man here, hasn't it? It's got to be the person who has got the standing and is recognised by everybody. Certainly not this rogue over here. But in point of fact, it may well be the rogue over here who is the one that has mercy because he reaches out to God.